Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So not too often do I cover any content or upgrades on the Vespa 946. It's such a rare beast that there's only a handful of people that want to do these upgrades. Of course, on our website, ScooterWest.com, we carry the full range of the original Vespa accessories and they're very high quality and high end for the 946. Um, so check them out on our website, ScooterWest.com. Uh, but the most popular accessory that people like to do for the American market 946s is eliminate the pod turn signals that are found both on the front and the rear. So you can see this 946 Armani still has one of the pods left on it and they just look out of place. And on the left side, I've already installed the original proper European turn signal. So on our website, scooterwest.com, you can find the whole set of four turn signals and look in the description of this video for the part numbers for the uh, turn signal sets. And amazingly, they're pretty affordable. They're all LED. Uh, they're what's found on the 946 in the rest of the world. And there's one additional part you'll need, which is an LED flasher. And I think the part number's flasher dash LED. Again, you can find that in the, um, in the description of this video. So let's just get right to it. I'm not gonna show step-by-step step on how to completely disassemble the 946, uh, but I'll get mostly into the wiring and what, need, what needs to be done to have these European turn signals hooked up to a North American market 946. So this 946 is definitely not the prettiest pony on the block. Uh, came through our shop as a salvaged 946. It was run into a car or something because the fork was bent so badly that you couldn't even roll the scooter around. But a testament to the Vespa frame, the frame is perfectly straight. I'm talking the inner structural parts of the frame. Uh, the body works a little bit beat up. We just did some rough body work. We actually pounded this fender, this aluminum fender all back into shape, but still looks pretty ugly. And we didn't really want to go through a full restoration of the scooter. Uh, it's kind of such a new scooter it would be more cost uh, effective just to find a 946 Armani that's in mint condition versus the hours and hours and thousands of bucks of parts the fixes want up to where it's like new condition. And I'll tell you one thing, specific parts in a 946 are astronomically expensive, but they are available. So let's get right to it. We're gonna get the European lights all hooked up. So in order to replace the pod turn signals on the rear, you're gonna to need to remove these aluminum cowls that are inset into the frame. Uh, there's a little plastic piece that's in between the floorboard and the cowl that has to be removed. It's already been removed. Uh, two screws hold that. And once you get that removed, there's a screw under here and a screw in the front, both Torx, so T30. Again, I'm not gonna go into every single detailed fastener on tearing this scooter apart. It's definitely a little different than in any other Vespa out there. So at this point, you can pull this cowl right off and there's a bunch of rubber um, grommets that hold this, this uh, side cover cowl on. And then you have this wiring harness that's in here. And you can just lift the little connector and separate the, the pod. So you gotta remove the original pod uh, they have the specific blanking plate that fills in the hole where the European style turn signal goes in. So you need a 15 millimeter wrench and go ahead So the reason they use a small connector is because it passes over the the nut that retains the pod turn signal. And at that point you're just left behind with the adapter there. So go ahead all these uh, fasteners right here, just go ahead and remove them all. So T25 Torx. At this point, the little outer plate will come out. So last, you'll need a three millimeter Allen wrench. And now you have all the parts uh, removed. Uh, that three millimeter Allen can just go right back in place. It's what that holds is this uh, 
fiberglass impregnated plastic piece to the aluminum outer skin. So take one of the rear turn signals. Again, the part numbers are all in the description. And the first thing you're going to notice is that it's got a different connector on it. So they just drop right in place. Uh, warn you, these screws are a little bit too long. So you want to have on hand uh, number eight by three eighths long self-tapping screws for these rear turn cells. You don't want to use those original screws that held the plastic bracketry in place. Um, otherwise, they'll end up popping through. You could probably cut the screws more effort than it's worth. So now we have the turn cells installed on both the left and the right cowls here. So the next step is I would take your original American style pod turn signals from the rear and salvage the wiring harness that comes with them. Let's go ahead and remove the single screw that holds the lens. Pull the lens out and there's two quick connects to disconnect those uh, turn signal pods. And the cool thing is if for some reason you ever wanted to go back to pods, you still have the, the the pause, you can solder the wires right to them if needed. So with the brand new integrated turn signal, fortunately we're going to cut that connector off. I do have the mating connector if you wanted to make some crazy harness. Probably not worth it. More, more effort than it's worth. So just go ahead and cut it midway. You could save the connector and splice them back together if you ever wanted to. Now with the pod turn signals, what I would do is probably cut this about right here. So, and then the sheathing just pulls right off. You can shorten the sheathing as well. Slide it back over the wires here. And it just depends on how, uh, how much detail you want to go into making these connections. There's, you know, whatever main ways to skin the cat or whatever that saying is. Um, typically is what I would do in my workshop is I would solder the wires and, and put heat shrink over top of the wires. And I'll use even this last little piece of sheathing just to insulate those wires. Um, but the interest to make this where everybody can do it, I'm just going to use uh, crimpable butt splices. And you want to strip probably about 3 8 inch off each of the wires and go ahead and take a high quality uh, butt splice. What this is a crimp, crimp splice that will tie two wires together. I'd recommend having a good crimper like this, this is a ratcheting crimper and put that on the one wire. Make sure you have a secure connection. And it's black to black. And do the same with the red, which will go to the white wire. And again, if you wanted to, you could certainly heat shrink this and put the sheathing over it like, like it was an original factory uh, part, but I'm not going to go through that effort to show you how to easily do that. So made a nice secure connection work perfect for the life of the scooter, no problems there. So we'll go ahead and put the cowl back on. Let's make that single connection that was removed. And there's kind of a cavity behind the frame and the rear fender that can accommodate the wire. And then at this point, you could just snap your, your cowl right back in place. and put all the, the remaining hardware. I wouldn't put the, um, the floorboard caps yet, but we have one of those turn signals in there. We're all set. And do the same for the other side, and you're pretty much done with the rear turn signals.
Maybe you like the pods in the front, just want to get rid of the rear ones. You could certainly do the front or the rear individually. You still need to use the LED flasher uh, regardless, but uh, most everybody just goes for the whole set. So this poor 946 is already partly disassembled, but I'll show you what you need to uh, remove in order to install the turn signals. So for the floorboard and the leg shield, uh, there's a upper cap. It's got a pair of screws. Go ahead and remove those screws. And it's got quite a bit of friction with some additional clips. So that's got to be pulled away. And after that, you're going to have three fasteners located underneath that panel that hold this floorboard. And moving on to both the left and the right side. So on the right side, you got fasteners all the way through this outer floor strip. And these floor strips just pull right out of the channel. No, no big deal there. And you have to have that middle section removed right here. And there's a pair of fasteners that hold this foot peg bracket. And once you get those all removed, along with this uh, last fast fasteners uh, under the battery, you need to remove the battery strap, remove the battery. Uh, this will pull out and it's got additional clips and it will lift all the way out. And you'll be able to pull this whole entire floorboard away from the bodywork. So here's the, the integrated running lights and they just have a pair of wires coming out of them. Uh, we're gonna replace them with the combination turn signal running lights. Again, part numbers are in the description. There's a single connector right here and it pulls right up. Go ahead and lift that tab. And just a pair of bolts that hold this into the leg shield. Remove uh, this running light. Go ahead and take the original equipment turn signal combo running light here. And it looks very similar, except for you have one extra wire in the harness here. So that just pretty much just lines right up. Bolts right into the frame. And go ahead and find the running light connector. And you can go ahead and plug this in. No problems here, the running light will work, but this extra wire, we're gonna go ahead and cut this out of the harness and splice it into the turn signal circuitry. There's also a clip located on the frame that will hold the connector out of the way. So you're gonna need to remove the upper half of the handlebars. Don't need to take it all the way off the scooter, such as this one, because there's some wiring that goes very deep into the frame. You just need to pull it away from the lower half of the handlebars. And they're retained by four screws and also you need to remove the mirrors and you're able to separate the upper handlebars and the headlight and speedometer assembly from the, the lower handlebars. So after you do this, you'll also be able to remove the single fastener that holds the front stems in pods. Uh, just like the rear pods, go ahead and separate the wiring from the pods, you can leave it connected to the scooter's main harness, just uh, which is lower in the leg shield right here. So these are the pair of wiring harnesses that came from the original pod turn signals. Uh, you see the left side's gonna have a pink with a black wire, and the right side's gonna be a white with a blue stripe and a black wire. Uh, it's gonna be a lot more wire than we need. We'll start by wiring up this left side. So the pink wire, which actually ends up turning into a white wire on this side, um, it's gonna tie to the red wire on his harness. The yellow and black wire are already connected when you plug this three pin connection back in place. So go ahead and you can cut some of the sheathing back just so you can get the red wire, I'll leave a little bit of it if there's some reason I ever wanted to uh, make the connection through the connector. Uh, typically when I do these in our workshop, I have all the pins for this connector. So I actually fill in the blank spot on this connector to make it look like an original equipment uh, wiring connection. But I'm just showing how everybody can do this with 
basic tools like a crimper and stripper, wire stripper. So strip the red wire, that's the wire leading to the, the turn signal. And go ahead, cut the white wire from the connection that leads to the pink with the black wire. And just go ahead and we'll make the one crimp connection. You don't need to mess with the black wire, that's redundant. Just the, the tr new turn signal is grounded through the same running light wire. Want to have some zip ties on hand because this is a lot of extra slack wire that you don't really need to mess with. Just like the other side, go ahead and make the connection and you could secure the connector right in this original clip right here. So this, this pink connection, you get all this extra slack wire that we don't really need and you could just loop it a few times and use a zip tie to secure it to the rest of the wiring harness. Keep it out of the way. Make sure there's still a little bit of slack on it because when you turn the steering on these scooters, uh, there is some movement in the wiring. So. so go ahead and do the same with the other connection that has a white with the blue wire on your right side. And you're gonna go ahead and route this wiring through this front cavity onto the right side. Make sure it doesn't interfere with any of these cables for your steering. Last thing you want is the wiring to bind up. So the last step is you need to replace the stock original turn signal flasher. So pretty much is suspended on this tab with a rubber uh, suspension right there. You unplug the stock flasher and then put the LED compatible flasher. It's a direct plug and play part. It's a slightly different appearance, but LED flasher just plugs right in. If you use the stock flasher, it's either gonna flash fast or the lights will just stay on all the time. So before you button up the bodywork, put the inner leg shield and the handlebars all back on. I suggest hooking up the battery and turn on your ignition and double checking both the right and the left turn signals are working. And it doesn't that look so much better than those silly pods that look like alien ears popping out of the rear. And same with the front, make sure the right and the left side is working. So no problems there, looks great. And now it's time to button up the bodywork and we're pretty much done with the job. So I hope that helped you out. Uh, if you're gonna install these style turn signals on your North American market 946, uh, 946 is a rare beast, so you may want to hang on to the old parts if for some reason you ever wanted to return it to the original, unique American pods. Um, if you don't want to use the pods, I don't know, you can hang them from a Christmas tree, use them as target practice, or whatever you like to do with them. Thanks again for watching. It's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. And again, if you're looking to accessorize your Vespa 946, uh, we have accessories in stock in our San Diego warehouse at scooterwest.com. So just search for 946 and you'll see all the wonderful accessories that are available for this unique, one of a kind scooter. Same with all the parts to do this job, just look in the description. Five parts needed and just a couple off the shelf tools and electrical parts. Thanks again, Robot here.